What's up, guys? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Also, please smash that like button on the video and enjoy the show. $2,000 challenge to meet in any MMA gym in Wisconsin or Illinois. The government people that are supposed to be her checks and balances. She's fired and pissed off so many of these people that they were more than happy to give us, here's the credit card statements, here's the FOIA mm. request. If you look at the priority list of the country, is your email pronouns at the top of the list? No. no. It's how can we make healthcare affordable even if you don't work for a corporation? How do we make housing affordable? What do we do about inflation? What do we do about jobs that are actually going to pay the bills so you don't have to have two or three jobs? There's a lot of things on this list that, you know, our budget, the Department of Defense has failed their audit 10 years in a row. We don't know where $3.2 trillion has gone. Wait, if, what's up with the three point two trade? We don't know where it, we don't know where it is. We don't know where it went. Can we Google this? Yes. Okay. Department of Defense failed audit. I was just doing research on this. It is mind blowing because, as you a business owner, me a business owner, we cannot afford to fail an audit ten That's years right. in a row and survive. We'd either be in jail or bankrupt. Or the dead. government. Let's see, six audit. There's another one. If you, I don't know if there's a three point two trillion dollar. You can. 3.8. 3.8 trillion. Oh, I was giving worse. him a benefit of the doubt. Ah, look at you. <laughs> All right, let's hit that. That is a sum of money that is <laughs> absurd. <laughs> this was not a surprise. That's a direct quote. Pentagon again fails annual audit. Of and they keep <laughs> raising the taxes that we have to pay them. How insane is that? Uh, look, there. this is where I'm also like... I want us to have the best defense and the best ability if, if we needed to do things. Of right? course. But there has to be a line with when you keep on saying, hey, don't worry, we got this to people that then have to pay out of their If of their you money. are not responsible with the taxpayer money, you get fired or yeah. you get replaced. Let's hire someone that if they can't, you can't balance the budget, you're out. It's that simple. Like there should be... Have you gone into many government jobs? I don't care if it's on a city level or state or national level. That it's like, wow, these people are efficient. <laughs> <laughs> I work with the city of Milwaukee for real estate, dude. Yeah. It is ridiculous. Yeah. I've waited two months for an email. Like, let's say I'm trying to get a, a tenant on Section 8 and they need a house like now. Because once they sign with me, they have a 30-day notice to their last landlord. So they're on mm. a ticking time bomb to, to transition. And then you'll get guys that... Hey, sorry, I was I was two months behind on my emails. And it's like, <laughs> Bob, what the fuck is going on in this office? There's no, like, we need to make it where there's incentives. Like in a sales job, you get your little base salary and then you get your commission and right. people get motivated by commission. We need a commission structure with government jobs that they actually haven't want to do things well and fast. Like you go to so many places like there's a group called Community Advocates in Milwaukee. And some of them people I've worked with are really good. Like you, when a tenant runs into trouble, a landlord can decide to help them. And I'll, every time I do, if I have the opportunity, hey, I'll help you fill out this paperwork so you can get three months of rent so you can stay stabilized. You get like the most added, like they act like if you walk in their office, like who the fuck? Like they act That's like right. it's your job. You literally signed up for the application to do this. And I come in, I'm trying to do something and they act like it's an imposition, you know? But the, and the problem with the incentivization though, is then the taxpayers will complain. Like if someone hits like some crazy numbers or something. Or they'll find a way to like fudge it where That's it's right. like, oh, he hit his 10 numbers and he's getting paid a hundred thousand dollar biweekly check, you know? Speaking of incentivization... The mayor of Your Dalton. Your favorite mayor in America. Can we, can we pull this video Hey, up? Tiffany Henyard, I hope you're doing good in Cook County Jail. I'll, may, I'll put some money on your commissary, maybe. Uh, and Officer Lacey, you still have not accepted my $2,000 challenge to meet in any MMA gym in Wisconsin or Illinois. This man has a $2,000 challenge. He's a big, tough guy. You know, This is the guy in the video. He's a poussé, as they say in a France. Poussé. I think that's what they say in French. They say, they say it like that. Too. I think they say it. All right, let, let's play this for a sec. The goons have come out. Tommy G. Milwaukee. Milwaukee representative. Hello, folks. I'm Tommy G. Today we're looking into the most corrupt mayor in America, allegedly. I can't believe she's real. I still can't. She believe. is a movie character. The mayor. Is she a hero or a villain? Some. Don't hit me. <laughs> <laughs> we're in the town with potentially one of the most corrupt mayors in America. We're still looking, but this is just for videotaping. Look how many police they brought out here. Are you going to get in your vehicle? I'll get in mine, you get in yours. 
One day while scrolling through TikTok, I was assaulted by a barrage of videos covering Dalton, Illinois Mayor Tiffany Henyard. She refers to herself as the super mayor as well as the most powerful woman in Chicago's South Side. But does she use her power for good? Uh -huh. People on the internet and in her own community have been calling her the most corrupt oh, mayor in America. Jacket. And here are some of the things she's been accused of. Stripping business licenses away from people that don't contribute to her charity, pay for play kickbacks and bribes, taking lavish first class trips on the taxpayer dime, making the city pay for her own personal ice skating rink, using oh the taxpayer God. money as a marketing budget for self-promotion for things like 122 Is that a music video? Her face on it, and using tens of thousands of taxpayer money Every dollars billboard has her face on it, even if it has nothing to do with it. Clean up her image. And I'll give her Huge this. Her bitch. image is tough to clean up. Here's some more reasons why. She double dips as both the mayor of Dalton and the village of Thornton township supervisor, and she's made it so that <laughs> if she's not re-elected as supervisor, the incoming person would receive a 90% pay cut. Oh, she's nice. racked up credit card debt like she's trying to set a record, and she tells the residents things like better have my money and compares herself to Martin Luther King. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. It's alleged that she rolls around like a crime boss. Some people claim that she's even gone as far as having the cars of people that oppose her shot up to intimidate them. Oh she rolls God. around in a convoy of extensive private security, of course on the taxpayer dollar, and it's said that she has the police force in her pocket partly due to the outrageous amounts of overtime she allows the her officers to be crazy. Paid. Again, on the taxpayer dollar. I hope you're noticing the theme here. Unfortunately for Tiffany and her police chief lapdog, Officer Lou Louis Lacey, <laughs> I have in my possession receipts, disciplinary forms, documents, and insider information that we will be diving into in great detail today. Folks, this channel does not stand for bullies, and by the end of my expose, I'm sure you'll draw the conclusion that Tiffany, Officer Lacey, and their cronies are not only bullies of the worst kind, but an absolute disgrace to the title of public servant. The FBI is currently investigating her, so I hope she gets oh, to see this fucked. video, but I'm not sure what the Wi-Fi situation is in Cook County Jail. Let's begin the episode. Alright, let's pause it. So, First people of all, definitely go Watch to Miguel, this. how good was that intro? Oh my god, on the it's so good! Set? It's so good. He, the, your your edits are beautiful. The fact that he's doing all that, he's shout the out man. Miguel. He's the absolute man. How long have you had him? A year and a half. He hit me up, uh, and I'm like, "Oh, do you want to cover a gay pride parade?" He's like, "Sure." We drove <laughs> to Chicago and we did that, and we've been working with each other ever since. Now, did you edit everything yourself before that? I used to, yeah. and you can tell. I mean, it's not <laughs> like if you look at the if you look at the Las Vegas tunnel video. Um, I edited that largely myself. I think almost entirely myself. And, um, you Lost know, it, it gets the too. point across. Like, I still have the important conversations. I still get to hear the, the details of what's going on. But it's not, like, captivating. It's not. It's bare bones artist. editing. Right. It's that, That's a real artist rendition there. But he. Oh, this is the one you edited? Oh, just listen to the intro song, people. In and out of life again. Life again, life again. Would you say it's dangerous? There's a lot of makeshift weapons around here. It's actually like, I wouldn't believe oh this shit if I was on the van. Tunnels are different. This is pretty good. I mean, uh, it's but not it's Miguel, not like, it's like, yeah, I mean, it gets the job done. If Miguel Wait, and Keegan Jeremy, got, today, you know, hit by a tornado, I could still put a video out, but it's not going to look nearly to as good. Right. That live there. Some people are on the run. Some people just like to live there and be out of society. Let me just say, I am nervous. I'm a little bit nervous. These are people that anything can go down. There's probably going to be machetes, knives. We're going down to explore. I have some special guests with me today. They're tagged in the description. We're here with Ethan. We're here with Colin. We're here with Lucci. We're here with Tyler. But and even okay. that, that was about a year and a half ago. Like... I feel like we're finally like we could consider, consider ourselves purple belts in the documentary yeah, space. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think our access to contacts is like a brown or black belt level. But like one thing we're really leveling up on is our voiceovers, our contacts, our yes. education. Like one thing we determined just a few weeks ago is even if I'm covering like the craziest Cambodian bloods of Stockton, I don't want to just get that. I want to one, one make it more well rounded by having more characters in the story that aren't gangster, but two. I want everyone to walk away with something that they've actually learned that they had no idea before they watched the video. A goal is now to have, I want high school teachers around America to show my videos to their kids. When, mm. they're, when they're lost, they're out of options. Like, how am I going to teach these kids? They don't want to learn from me. I can't speak their style. Okay, we're going to put on a Tommy G video that teaches them about That's this. awesome. That's one of my goals. That's and anytime cool. high school or college uh, uh, professors or teachers ask me to come speak to their kids, I always do it. So... That's a big thing is reaching the youth. Yeah, I, I love that. And and I think you have to make learning fun. Yes. Right? It and should be fun. There's so many yes. cool things to learn. Yes. And, and that's like a huge issue that happened at schools now in this era because they can't make, you know, the 
nine to three day like entertaining for the kids well this is how to do it but that mayor back to her yeah let's talk about her so first of all how did you some of this information was like through like FOIA requests so the trustees that i interviewed in the video they're they're basically like the government people that are supposed to be her checks and balances she's fired and pissed off so many of these people that they were more than happy to give us here's the credit card statements here's the FOIA Mm. request so they gave us a lot of the firepower we needed to put together a compelling story that wasn't just allegedly stuff happening, but here it is on paper. And she walks around with her private police security all the time. She had a guy work 314 hours of overtime in two weeks. Yes. He apparently (laughs) slept two hours a day and he got a $13,000 paycheck. Here's the Uh. thing about her. I mean, you've met some high level people and if they have any security, it's like one guy. Yeah. She's rolling around in a convoy. She has a town of 190,000. She rolls in a convoy of five Tahoes that she overpaid by 60K for. Yeah, what's the deal there? She I don't know. Spent Maybe there's kickbacks on going on. So the Tahoe itself, brand new, $93,000, which in a, a city where like a third of the residents are in poverty, I don't know if that's the best investment, but she spent six of them. But not only that, she leased them at a rate 60000 over that initial buying price. So wait, either, she, wait, explain that. She leased them? Yeah. So, she didn't buy them. So on paper, she's going to pay $153,000 for the vehicle once everything's paid out for a $93,000 vehicle. And not even own it. No. So here's more dirt on her. And this is stuff that um, I, I just have to say allegedly because I don't have the documents, but I have the stories. We the use anecdotes. the word allegedly a lot yes. in here. Yeah, it's, it helps it's, it's, for legal yeah, reasons, you know? Yeah. She does pay for play. So during COVID, you know, there was like 60K awarded to business owners. Maybe 12 different business owners would get five grand. But to get it from her, hey, Julian, I'll give you the five grand, but you got to sell me 2,500 back. Or, hey, there's been a, was it a TIF, a TIF? A tax, it's some sort of tax credit to, for development. Hey, developer, we can get you $2 million from TIF money, but you have to, you have to wire me back a million of it. And if you don't, if you don't, if you don't donate, donate to my charity, we're going to take your business license away. So there was multiple bars, restaurants that were out of business because they wouldn't play with her and she took their business license away. Dr. Scott in that video, she has that that strip mall that has the free grocery store. So what she does is uh, a food a food market, not a food, a food kitchen, like a place to get free food with dignity. So it's like a grocery store. You walk in, I can get the peanut butter, I can get a cereal. Right. All funded through her organization, but she has a lot of empty units in there that we're going to help Fun, like the overhead was going to help fund the charity. Mm. So if she could rent it out to other people, other organizations, she can invest that into free food for the people. She's been blocked from opening it up, all these like bure- bureaucratic reasons that she can't do it. And she's bleeding right now. And I was just on the phone with her because um, we had an error with the GoFundMe. So there's a GoFundMe. We, we raised $30,000 for her. And there's 1,200 people so far that have watched that video have donated wow. to it. Some's of awesome. $5, some's of $1,000. It's amazing. She on the phone with me and she's like, the money's not hitting my account. I'm like, it's not hitting mine. And then like she does like she trusts me, but she's also like, you know, the most sure. viable option probably in her mind is that it's going to me. So sure. I'm like, fuck. Like, how do I where is it? Turns out I had a like an old Huntington bank account that I haven't used in like two years that somehow GoFundMe was still attached to that it was depositing there. So I had to run to go or, uh, to Huntington take that money out, run to my chase and then wire it to her. And luckily she has the first chunk of it and the, the, another chunk of it's on the way. I have to go back to Huntington, oh, back gotcha. to chase. That's but scary. her overhead is like 10 K a month at, at minimum. So we, we gave her another three months of operating room, but, um, she's bleeding because of this mayor. So she was did that, that the lady who had her car allegedly shot up. No, that, I believe that was Kiana. Well, I'm forgetting all these trusty names, but, right. um, no, that that's in a New York Post article. That lady that got her car shot up, shot up, and she's certain it was Mayor Tiffany's goons. I I'm not. It wouldn't surprise me one bit. I, what what shocked me is I'm watching this video. I watched it the day it came out, and I'm like, I think it had been out for like six hours or something. And I'm thinking to myself, how how the FBI is already in town, yeah. just on the basis of this video. Hopefully. How are they not knocking on the door already and saying, ma'am, you're under arrest? Yeah. Like, it, 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 it's so bad. It, it's, so, it, it's so blatant. And I've seen some blatant-ass politicians. We've had Jim DiOrio in here a bunch. He worked in the public corruption unit of FBI at one Ooh. point in his career. You uh-huh. know, he had some blatant ones. This is the worst I've ever seen. 
I think to properly cover her, that video is 30 minutes. I think we had to have maybe a five hour video to properly cover her. I mean, she is outrageous. And that's the thing. There's a common trend in this country. She does it on a local level, but it's happening nationally. There are people calling themselves public servants. And a lot of them are our U.S. representatives that are somehow the best stock traders that have ever walked the planet, (laughs) yet they have a full-time job as a senator. So we got Nancy Pelosi, we got Tommy Tuberville. Those are some of the best performing guys right now. (laughs) It just, it's so in our face. Yeah. That they're timing the market. Oh, you yeah. you just invested 60K in an energy stock? Let me see the commission you sit on. Oh, the energy commission. Like, how are they getting away with it? What's the what's the old George Carlin quote? quote? It's a giant club and, and you're you ain't not in, in it. it. That's it, man. Mr. Carlin, good guy. His book is fantastic, by the way. Rest in peace. I never to... read his book. That's one of the secrets, I think, to the channel, too. Um, we have a lot, like, the, most of the team are readers. So we are constantly, Love that. The, ever since like? I was a little kid. I read everything. So everything from biogra- bi- biographies, like I would really recommend Teddy Roosevelt, Malcolm X, Benjamin Franklin. Those are probably my three favorite biographies. Um, I mean, I just recently read, read a fantasy novel that my sister recommended. And I was like, oh, this is pretty damn good. I think it's The Call of like the Wind. Like a sexual or, fantasy model? Oh, like, uh, like <laughs> he was at half mast when the, he walked the game play. Um, like more like Harry Potter fantasy. Gotcha. Um, well, sometimes those get a little. I used to read a lot of like self help books, but then it's like there's a certain point where it's like, I'm you gotta do it. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.